us to be help us to have clear and sharp minds and to not to do anything that we shouldn't be doing today. Help us to glorify you and have a blessed day and to be a blessing to others. In Jesus name, amen. Amen. Feels good. All right, sir, I just want you to um, do a throttle split on yourself. Remember, not a chop, a throttle split on yourself and make it to the spot we have predetermined many a time. So again, airspeed, green spot, airspeed, green spot, just making sure to always see that spot. Yep, yep. And always adjust early on your slip. What you need to do, remember, you're raising your collective and going into a slip, so you actually need to reduce the collective if going uh, into a slip. Yep. Yeah, this is going to be a simple. A little short. Don't worry, you just hit your tail on top of the building, you're okay. And then we, top we, of the <laughs> I feel like I was slowing that whole thing. Oh, Go for it. that's why we're starting out the day with a little simpler. Yep. So again, just try to relax it. Just remember that um, if you go into slip ever, Drop it's it going to be reducing that. Okay. Yep. That's taking our energy away. You're basically just putting on a big old break. Yep. Airspeed green, spot listen to the RPM. Coming down. Got the RPM, speed looks good. And right now you see you're going to go over yeah. shoot, just get the RPM back up because that will help you drop, as well as a slip if necessary. Ah, uh, should have done a little bit more. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Denver lights on. Still operational. Yep, it's par for the course on this one. Okay, let's go. Guess we've blown away all of our dust. Ah, it's a lot better, isn't it? There we plus, go. Plus a little bit of dampness. Yeah. Do you see that spot? Got ETL right then. It's also moving with us though. Correct, but the thing is where it's still coming up, because we, since it's moving ahead of us, that means that spot has moved slightly, but as soon as you get your mass to it, that's ETL. Ah. Versus with grass, it um, it's moving with you a little bit, but if you have, the easiest way to uh, not have it move with you at all is if you have a little bit of a breeze, just a touch. But it's still at that spot, wherever you see that spot, that is exactly where you get ETL. I thoroughly enjoy this. I'm glad you do. I've been deprived of the last two and a half years. <laughs> and I mean that sincerely. Really? You know, trying to get them to double check that stuff, guys, you know, without actually saying it. You know, I'm just saying, you know, and then you check your gauges, make sure everything's looking good, and, and then um, some of them will even say, all right, one, two, three in the green, and they're out. Yeah. How could they be in the green? Yeah. And... <laughs> And then I'm like, really? Is it is it good? And they're yeah. like, well, wait, that's that's bad. And I was like, yeah, and it has been for the last 30 minutes. Yeah. So make it happen early. Yep. There you go. There you go. Nice transition there. That's the best you've ever done. Very nice. And remember, you can just hold until you feel like you need to start well, going I forward. Need to go forward. All right. Remember, raise that yeah. collective to get that going Keep forward. Going. That's true, because that really bites you to get going that's forward. right. I'm going to be short. But that's right. So now just make a good auto rotation. So just bring the RPM back. Don't try to extend it. Just bring the RPM back. Go into a flare. Quick stop. Forward and pull. That's true, because it takes you a while to start going forward. Right. So, you know, you don't want to get into a dangerously low situation. Exactly. But, uh, you know, get the bite in as far as bring the collective up and yep. then then be ready to push it back down. Yep. You might be the first person that has actually understood that concept for me at this stage. Because most people do not grasp on, I have low rotor RPM. Why am I going to raise my collective? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like you got to get that forward, that lateral just movement. Mess, yeah, you just miss your spot. Yep. But you get that lateral movement going, and then you can control it as necessary and keep on going. But yeah. You can drop, uh, mostly even out west uh, in the states, man. You, I've personally taken a helicopter R22, and then had them pick a spot, and you, I tell them, okay, you tell me when I need to answer, because they're having a hard time com comprehending some of this energy thing at the higher density altitudes. Yeah. And they told me when to go forward. We dropped another, you know, 700 plus feet before we started moving forward, because they were so thin. In, in comparison, you know, so it's like, now there's the difference. Yeah. You know, that's why you need to have that all figured out where you can feel your descent rate. Yeah. Feel it. Because if you don't have that feeling for it, you won't comprehend it. And then also, on your level off, you know, if you're, if you're coming down quickly, you better be feeling your descent rate, not just looking for it. Yeah. Feeling it so you can be like, okay, I need to start leveling off, you know, say at 100 feet or whatever. So that that slowly transitions you into a forward flight. Yeah. Right? Versus, okay, we go to our 40, 50 feet, like the book always says, it's like, hey, that's not real. And again, as soon as you see you have your spot, bring that RPM up. So I'll just bring your RPM up. That'll help you descend more, as well as your slip, only as much as necessary. But if you see you need to get down lower, do your do aggressive now. slip up here. And then a moderate one down here. A little high RPM. Yep. So, ah. I'm just curious. What? So if you turn, see where your spot is? Yeah, right there. So why did you wait to do that hard flare, lateral flare? Because you would have been just right where you wanted to be if you would have just done that same flare you did earlier. So I'm just kind of curious on why did I wait? Yes, sir. Can I, uh, because I didn't. <laughs> I guess I should have, I need to do it early so I can land where I need to be. There you go. Because what happened is you're doing this gentle one and then you wait until you went by, by yeah. and then you did the hard one. Yeah. No, I'm just curious. You know, I'm not trying to monitor. I'm just curious. Like, you did, when when you did it, this is one of the best times you've done it. You actually got I in I felt there. actually a pretty good, yeah. like... Yeah, that was the, the best one you've done so far is you actually were more in control and you made it happen. It's just you wait until you're past your spot. Yeah. That was coming around. Now you feel that drag at that slow speed, how much drag we had? Yeah. Now picture at, you know, 10 knots, which most people don't even touch down going that slow. And we felt how I much think you'd drag be that. dragging and, uh, yeah, I think it, you'd be. It'd be over. I mean, and that was touching down gently. That was touching, I mean, really. And this is on a dry surface. That's right. Not a sticky rice pit field. Exactly right. That's why I'm saying the physics behind it, because simple math. You stop something here, you have your CG up here. It keeps on going. Yeah. Okay, I know I'm going to get there. There you go. Getting that RPM up first. And I'm going to slip and bring my speed back a little bit. Okay. I got the RPM there, and I'm still going to blow it. <laughs> so what would you do here? Just, just really go, okay, because that's going to grab your RPM. Yeah. I forget that really acts like a big, big break. That's right. Now it's just easy peasy, right? Yep. Now it's just simply now you're, finish you're it doing off. this, right? Finish it off, come yep. forward, and you're set. And you can go on the go. Okay. Yeah, I, uh... I need to just take off the yeah, direct over this. I wanted to slip, but then it was like, I forgot <laughs> that if you get into it more, it will help prevent you those RPMs from coming up. That's right. Yep, big, big, big time. Yep. Start feeling the shutters. Yep. 
Time to go now. All right, pull your power off and forward. There, you didn't quite descend 20 feet. What do you think that technique? It works, right? Pretty simple. Pretty simple and it's nicer than even descending 200 feet, isn't it? Yeah. Also, if you're doing a long line, your long line's 100 feet. Yeah. Have you done much of that? Not a, not a lot, but I sure like it. Yeah. All right, let's do it again. Yeah. And be a little more aggressive on your okay. uh, tipping off, because remember, you're tilting and blowing that column of dirty air away from you as well as pulling yourself off. Okay. So maintain this heading. Feel the shutters. Yeah. I'd go now. Okay. So that one was about a 10 foot reduction. And I didn't even really pull, I didn't even keep my power in there either. You pulled some, but not as much as you could have. Yeah. I think we've got some time. I see them. Yep. Well, let's make it work out to our spot. Get the speed. And since we have altitude, do we need to keep our RPM down? No. All right. I just like hearing the horn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's fair enough. <laughs> And remember, since you have time, correct it early so you don't have to make anything aggressive at the end. Uh, well, I can go ahead and just... There you go. You can just take your time back here. Just yeah, remember that's true. There's no point to go forward. Yep. RPM is high. I'm going to start working towards my spot. Good choice. And one RPMs. thing you can do when you get your airspeed back, when you see you're still high, get it back slowly. Okay. Like 30, 40, you know, slowly. Are you going to make your spot? Yeah. Okay. I know I, uh, you always have to come with the throttle there. <laughs> Good job observing that. So, did you feel your descent rate? Oh, it's pretty high. As you dropped it down to, when you're getting close to about level off speed, you're about 55. When you got to about um, where you should My have been. My descent rate meaning what? Like during the whole thing? No, just at the end there. Oh. Um, because you start dropping off your airspeed substantially. So when, we get, when you're getting ready for your flare, you're just a little under 50 which then means the whole finish off is going to be a lot more of a drop. Versus if you're keeping up that energy, that airspeed, if possible, obviously, we're talking about in this yeah. particular scenario, if you keep up that airspeed, you can have, well, if you want to, you can keep zero drop, you know, and then go right into your flare. But of course, we want to level off somewhere around 50 feet, depending on our descent rate, just to fill our energy. If it's a higher descent rate, well, okay. let's do it higher. But then you want to make it descend to your flare altitude before flaring. Yeah. You know, there, there'll be sometimes you'll be out here and it'll want to just glide. It's like, well, you have to forcefully put it down to your flare altitude. Dave, that's something that I'm not used to as far as like, just thinking back from the, you know, Robinson days where you just kept everything and then you just, at least for me, I just, you know, started progressive flare. So yep. I never really had that leveling off and then continuing to yeah. settle and then getting into it. And now the reason for that again is that if you don't have that level off, mostly in the higher density altitude, uh, I've experienced it plenty of times where most people would splat into the runway yep. because they're expecting it to be a certain way and they're not yep. feeling their descent rate and they just go right through it. Now something to keep in mind is that if you're in that slip, it's okay to have your RPM 100% in that slip. Okay, yeah. Well, I think it was, that was just because I forgot to reduce it. Okay. So what does the airspeed feel like? Uh, it's slow. Yep. Your descent rate. Off. I'm just going to finish with a good flare. Okay. Or a bad flare. <laughs> <laughs> that was... <laughs> okay, the next one. I like how you, you you said it, and then you realized, nope, and so you corrected what it was going to be, and I like how you said that, because at least you saw it early enough. You you actually realized it during it. Now, at the same time, you could have gone a little bit harder, and it still could have been good, just so you know. I feel like I was going a little forward on that, too. You were. Yeah. Yep. 
No worries. You know, even the failures, though, are a success as far as, like, training, as long as you learn. Yes. Or are, uh, Amen to that. And as long as you're gaining some kind of knowledge that you can use, it is definitely a success. You know, if you're high and you're short, you should have at least a three-step flare. I'm sorry, slip. Um, a three-step, three if you're high and short? Yeah, in other words, you're not, not to the point where you want to do turns, but you're coming in and you're realizing, I've got to use up a lot of energy here, but I don't want to do a turn. Yeah. Then you slip it, come out. Slip it, come out, and then use your last slip at the end or something. Okay. You know what I mean? Just, just for airspeed? For or just descent for descent as well. Ah, as RPM. because that's when you get a, another idea of how you're doing. That's right. Exactly. Because uh, you're slipping, you come back. Yeah. Uh, still high. So slip a constant in. slip is not, not, you'd rather be more aggressive than stop. Definitely. More aggressive than stop. Definitely. That's why I say take care of it early. Yeah. So like, like right here, it's like, all right, engine's gone. Well, you know right away. It's like, okay, bring Woo! it, slip it. I was like, fall out the door. <laughs> slip it in, slip it in, come out. Yeah. Look at it. It's like, uh, all that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> if I wasn't wearing a seatbelt there, I would have gone out the door. Hey, it's required to wear a seatbelt. <laughs> yeah. So. Slip early, get it done, or if you're high enough and you feel comfortable with it, it's okay to reduce airspeed. It doesn't mean come to zero. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to go backwards, whatever. But reduce the airspeed as necessary or slip as necessary. Come out, see what it looks like. But I would recommend for most people, do not uh, be trying to reduce airspeed below 500 feet for the average person. Ah, what is this? Another person. Good My choice. Goodness. Good choice. Your goodness too? Don't you hate these Ford engines? Hey. That okay? Yes, sir. Level out. And bring it in. I should have been a little bit more aggressive there. Yes, sir. Congratulations. That was probably the best one you've done far as the being the, on the more complicated side. I just failed the other ones. But it would, have been made, you, it would have made a lot easier for the rescue personnel to retrieve our bodies. Yes. Because, you know, why, why complicate it and have our bodies out in the tree somewhere? Exactly. Now you're realizing, oh man, I'm I'm way too long. Slow it down, slow it down, and then be like, okay, now just slowly come out early. Don't die for it. Just start being like, okay, I'm a little I'm a little high still. Ten knots, twenty knots, thirty knots, forty, and it's yeah. like, okay, now I can start coming back into my full speed. Then you can have a slip. But if you try to all of a sudden die for it, now you have all this energy and realize I'm still close. Yeah. Versus yeah, you're kind of stuck. Yeah. Versus if you just slowly pitch it forward. And it's like, I'm still high, but I'm slowly pitching it forward. Now I'm slowly getting up to my 70 knots, let's say. And all that matters is have, have around 70 plus knots for ease. I'm not saying it's a necessity, but for ease, have 70 plus knots on your level off. Whatever altitude you have to level off for that day, try to have around 70 knots by that time. That's not a, a have to, but I'll tell you one thing, it makes it a lot easier. easier.